Well, thanks to Andrea and the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity um, to present this material. So the first part of my talk should be considered part of the school. And so the first part will be about what I call bundles of curved um, differential graded Lie algebras. So the <coughs> these um, geometrical objects are certain, um, in my point of view, like the simplest kinds of derived schemes and stacks that you can imagine. And then, so I want to explain what they are and then give some examples how they actually occur. Um, Yes, I, un I unmuted. <coughs> so, um, here's the definition. So, a, <coughs> a bundle of, well, curved VGLAs um, over a um, so the base is always going to be smooth, a smooth um, scheme or a stack. And by stack, I just mean classical one stack M. So this is a graded vector bundle um, over the smooth scheme. Um, so that's going to be noted by L dot and it only starts existing in degree two, and then it has higher components. <coughs> um, endowed with some extra structure. Um, so there's first of all a section. So um, <coughs> of the second vector bundle, so which is really the first one, um, then um, so everything is um, OM linear, and OM linear um, map um, of degree plus one, so from L, so it's called this delta, from L to L, and then um, and an OM bilinear um, alternating bracket. So that's of degree zero. It doesn't change degrees. So if I have an input of degree P and, an in and another input of degree Q, the output is of degree P plus Q. <coughs> And then um, the following actions have to be satisfied. <coughs> so, um, if, uh, this, so this is a F. This is, by the way, called the curvature of the curved DGLA. This F is a section of L2. I can apply delta to it. I get a section of L3, and as such, a section of that vector bundle, this should vanish. Mm. Um, this is, this delta is not really a differential, so this, I call it the twisted differential, because it's not a differential, because the square is not zero, rather it's the bracket with f. Um, if I do this, I get an operation of degree two, it raises degree by two, and this is also of degree two, because f is of degree two, and the bracket of degree zero. Um, so these is an equality as um, so delta the twisted differential is a graded derivation with respect to the bracket and um, the bracket satisfies graded Jacobian identity And so my slogan is that many interesting modular spaces, or so many, many interesting modular problems in derived um, geometry can actually be solved by one of these 
very geometrical objects. Um, just as, as the first absolute baby example of this, um, so derived geometry should encompass um, classical geometry. So um, if I if I want to think of the affine um, variety um, defined by a bunch of polynomials f1 through fr. Um, and a bunch of variables, x1 to xn, k is going to be my ground field, which is of, of characteristic 0. Um, so I can think of this as an algebraic um, morphism from this affine variety an to ar. Um, <coughs> to make a bundle of curved DGLAs out of it, I set m, the base, equal to an. This this affine space with coordinates x1 through xn. And L2, the vector bundle over m is just the trivial vector bundle. So this is L2 is equal to, so a, the trivial bundle over m with fiber AR and this map F, which is a morphism for a, a n to AR, I can think of it also as a section of this vector bundle. So, um, so F as a section uh, of L2. And then um, I only have this structure. Uh, I, there's, there's no higher L's here, so there's no delta and there's no bracket and uh, no axioms. So, but this is a, just to give you an idea how this, this kind of structure generalizes this classical thing. In particular, um, well, I, I will not um, discuss morphisms between these things. This is really just a construction uh, or you know, geometrical object derived geometry talk of circuit. Yeah. The point is that you are identifying your whole variety as the fiber over zero of bundle. Yes. Oh. Yes. So that that's the um what am I saying? <coughs> Particularly simple examples, examples of derived um, schemes or stacks. <coughs> so, um, a few um, associated data to such a structure. So, there's the associated classical locus, which is a classical scheme or stack, and that is simply, um, well, also known as the Maurakata locus, so MC of um, this um, bundle L of differential of curved DGLAs over M. Um, well, that is just um, the scheme theoretic zero locus of the section of L2 uh, has a subscheme in M. So, as you just pointed out, um, that's um, the classical scheme. So. <coughs> There's also an associated um, uh, tangent complex this thing is dual uh, to an obstruction theory so rather than indicate the obstruction theory I talk about I'm going to indicate the tangent complex so let me say x um, let me denote f um, the classical locus, uh, sorry, x is the classical locus. Usually, it's just fixed notation. <coughs> so, I don't know, let me maybe call this thing theta. So, let me start by, so here's L2, um, <coughs> L3, etc., L4. Um, I'm going to shift this whole thing by the, um, to the left. Um, so this thing moves into degree one. This thing moves into degree two. That into degree three. Mm, I restrict everything to the classical locus. And once I restrict to the classical locus where f is zero, delta becomes a differential. 
so this is then um, an actual complex. <coughs> um, but I add something in degree zero, namely the tangent um, bundle of M restricted to X. And here's like a map induced by the differential of the curvature. So that's a complex of vector bundles um, over the classical locus X. So you can think of that as an object in the derived category. Well, you can, um, if you think about it, the section um, of this vector bundle O2 de de gives rise to a map um, to restrict to its own zero locus of a well-defined map here. This is um, essentially the derivative. <coughs> so, for example, um, the, if I take the zero sheaf uh, cohomology of this complex, um, that's just the, the risky tangents um, sheaf of X. <coughs> and um, H1, you should think of as some kind of obstruction sheaf, but maybe rather than that, if I say, if I, if I have an element mu, so in the classical locus, in the Maracatan locus, so an element at point in X, I can pull this thing back further to the point mu. Um, so if I restrict, pull it back to mu. This is just, um, so then I get a complex of vector space. It's the zero cohomology. This is the Zariski tangent space. of the Maracatan locus at mu and um, H1 is an obstruction space, so it contains the obstructions. <coughs> and to put this into um, the wider context of, of um, uh, derived geometry, so there's also an associated um, uh, C D, G, scheme, well, or stack. So differential graded scheme, um, C stands for commutative differential graded scheme stack. So um, the, these, these, curve, these bundles of curved differential graded leaders are sim especially simple examples of, of D, G schemes. So how do I construct that? So I'm gonna denote by R, um, the following, so I take my um, complex of vector bundles shifted to, to the left by one, I take the dual as a complex of vector bundles and then I take, or as a graded vector bundle, and then I take the symmetric algebra or the sheaf of symmetric algebras of that over the structure sheaf of M. And then um, you can see that the bracket <coughs> so so the bracket was a map from lambda two of l to l now I've shifted and dualized, so instead I can think of it as a map from here to there. So lambda turns into sim and the order gets reversed, so this comes from the bracket. Um, the differential, so this is from, from the bracket and Q1, similarly, um, so it is sim1, OM L1 dual, which is of course just L1 dual, so this, is, this comes from from the, the shifted, uh, the twisted differential, right? Just, just take the dual of it. It goes the other, I mean, goes that way, and then Q zero. Well, to sim zero, which is of 
course, just O M. So um, the this is from F. And F dually, you, you know, if you work it out, what it means is actually just a morphism here. And then um, so um, all of these three maps um, map from uh, the generating bundle of the symmetric algebra into this symmetric algebra. And so it extends uniquely to a derivation of the algebra Rm. So I get um, derivations from Rm to Rm. And then I take Q is equal to Q0 plus Q1 plus Q2. And then all the axioms for the curve to DGLA um, can be summarized by the single axiom Q squared is equal to zero. So that's equivalent to the above axioms. And um, so, so this um, M with this sheaf of algebras and this differential is a DG scheme or a stack, depending on whether M is a scheme or a stack. So. Okay, so, so much about that. Now I want to explain, um, where, does, where do these curved um, differential graded Lie algebras come from, typically? So... Um, is it simple? Yeah, I mean, this, okay, I should, what I can say is if you keep going, um, then instead of a curved DGLA, bundle of curved DGLAs, you get a bundle of curved L infinity algebra. So that's the, yeah, but these are particularly simple and because they stop at two, yeah. And I don't have to talk about L infinity structures. Um, L infinity. Okay, so um, where, do these, uh, where do these come from? So sources, source, main source of um, such um, structures. So there's a two-step two process. So the first step, A, mm, let's start with L. So different font, this is um, Roman L. So this is a finite um, dimensional uh, DG LA differential graded Lie algebra, um, so L, so this one will start in degree one and higher. So this is an actual differential graded Lie algebra, no curved, um, no curvature here. So then um, I take M to be L1. So L1 is a finite dimensional vector space, which I just think of as a scheme. Uh, affine scheme. And then for all i at least two, so L1 turns into the base and then the higher, the other ones, so, um, so Li, the bundle over M, is just going to be the trivial bundle with fiber Li. So that's my notation. I take the trivial bundle over the base M with fiber Li. So um, then I, the curvature, um, which right, it's a section of L2, um, comes from, um, from, so M, right, is L1. This is a trivial bundle, but um, if I, so I have a, have a map from L1 to L2 named the traditional curvature map of the DGLA, which sends mu to d mu plus one half bracket mu mu. This is a morphism quadratic algebraic map from L1 to L2, which I can think of as a section of the trigger bundle. So that's F from delta, so from Li to Li plus one. So um, I'll say in the fiber over mu in M, well, mu in L1 um, is is just 
the twisted differential d mu. Right, all the fibers of these vector bundles are canonically just these vector spaces. And here I have the map um, that sends x to, um, so I take dx and then I twist it by um, the adjoint, the, uh, so by this twisted by, by bracket with mu, which is in degree one, so this makes sense. And um, the bracket is just the constant bracket in every fiber, um, just the, the given bracket from the DGL a, DGL a structure. And then you can check that the actions are satisfied and you get examples. Um, and the second step um, is, now suppose that G is an algebraic group mm, acting on L mm, by automorphisms mm, of the DGLA structure. <coughs> so then um, it acts on I mean, this curved um, differential, curved bundle um, is defined in terms of L, so then G will act on this, it acts on M and then fiber-wise on L, and so it preserves everything. And so uh, all the data of the, of the bundle of curved DGLAs descends to the quotient. So, um, so we get um, and before I say that, I want to say one thing that um, so that denote L. Right, remember L starts only in degree one, so if I define L zero to be the Lie algebra of G, um, then I can augment um, this, so L zero, well, is then um, a DGLA. <coughs> but I get, um, get a bundle of curved, DGLAs over the base, over the quotient. So that's the quotient stack. <coughs> because I'm taking the quotient stack, the structure automatically descends. Um, I should remark that um, I could <coughs> typically, um, <coughs> one can generalize this a little bit. Um, <coughs> By, um, so the action on the base M, which is L1, can be twisted by a so-called gauge code cycle, um, which is a very popular thing that one often <coughs> needs in this context. But for my example, I won't need it, so I'll skip it for. Simplicity. Okay, so that's. Um, And then um, you can study, uh, this gives rise to actually a GIT problem, namely this, the, the, uh, from the action of G on M, you can study GIT to, to see if whether you can do better than this Artin stack as a base. You can maybe define um, a, a scheme as base or G, a GIT quotient or, or at least a Deleen Mumford stack or quasi projective Deleen Mumford stack typically. So GIT um, to, to define some kind of. Um, stable locus inside M, an open subset, where this is then a quasi-projective giving Mumford stack. So that can be very nice. <coughs> and this thing should really be considered as um, the derived, um, so the derived um, the lean Mumford stack. Of, um, of the Marcatan elements of this differential graded Lie algebra um, modulo this G or gauge equivalence. I mean, the Marcatan locus of this of this um, Roman L is equal to the Marcatan locus of the curved. DGLA just by the definition of F. And um, 
<coughs> so if I want to know the, the higher tangent spaces um, of, of this, of, of this um, derived stack in terms of this L, this, this straight L, so if I have mu and Maracatá element in my um, DGLA, okay, I should have, um, maybe I should have said so. So what's the cohomology of this um, theta at the point defined by mu? Well, it turns out it's I, because of the shift, the cohomology of the um, <coughs> differential gradient Lie algebra I started with. Now this one here is, is, has been augmented like this with the Lie algebra of the gauge group in degree zero. <coughs> And this is the twisted differential defined by this formula. That's easy to see. And so, and in fact, um, you have um, a DGLA L with a twisted differential. Right? If mu is actually a Maracatan element, um, this thing is actually differential, and you get a um, DGLA you know, twisted by mu. Um, this governs um, the deformation theory um, of the derived thing um, at the point mu. Okay. So let me give some examples. Um, so the first thing is like basically um, a non-example, um, but it's the main um, source of the ideas. So um, let's say y is a C-infinity manifold. Mm. And I look at um, uh, this thing. That will be the, the complex of differential forms, so C-infinity complex value differential forms on on Y, and I tensor that over C with the n by n matrices. <coughs> and this is a differential graded Lie algebra. Um, right, the differential comes from the Durham differential and the Lie algebra structure from the commutator of the bracket. <coughs> um, I have the gauge group G, so that's the C infinity maps from Y to GLN, and its Lie algebra is indeed um, L0. Yeah? <coughs> well, in this case, um, I've just said this is just going to be the zero map. And um, the bracket from L0 with these other guys is um, obtained by differentiating the action of G on L. <coughs> if I have a gauge co-cycle, um, then this is the gauge, the derivative of it. <coughs> okay, so in this case, um, if, if I look at um, the Marcatan elements, um, so flat connections, module gauge equivalents, I get, um, um, I would, would get, so the derived moduli, so this is derived, moduli of um, of rank n local systems on the manifold y. And <coughs> if I restrict to the simple locus, then I can basically make this into a, into a scheme. So the simple local systems. Um, but this doesn't really fit into my context because everything's infinite dimensional and I don't get an algebraic, um, anything algebraic this way. So instead I can, um, so uh, if you can, if you triangulate Y and then you replace, um, so omega Y by simplicial um, code chains then everything becomes finite dimensional and then you can, um, you know, apply this machinery to get a derived, um, I mean, a 
derived scheme um, in the shape of um, one of these bundles of curved DGLAs. And this has essentially done by um, Kapranov um, in 2001, even though I didn't use this language. I, the language of curved differential gradient Lie algebra somewhat simplifies the treatment, but it's all in there. Um, another example, you can treat um, derived moduli of stable sheets this way. Yeah? Yeah, no, actually, this, ex this example here does have a gauge co-cycle that I have to twist by, so I, I, it's not exactly, it doesn't, ex I mean, um, the action of, of G. It's not confused with the Ramsey, right? The G is taking from both section of J or just from the No, I, um, No, ev everything is then twisted by this gauge co-cycle. So, um, um, so I should say this, as I said, this is not really an example. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I... No, it's certainly... A Um, well, I mean, I'm convinced that if, if I, if I um, redo the theory um, with the gauge co-cycle included, I do get a bundle of... Um, oh, it does? Um, this is like um, derived local systems, um, something like that. You can treat um, derived moduli of stable sheaves on a um, projective manifold this way, projective um, manifold. But the, the thing I really want to talk about is the derived moduli of algebras in this, treated this way. <clears throat> and this is um, joined um, with Aaron Lui. So, how do I, this starts out with V, um, a graded vector space. Mm. So, um, uh, direct sum, n equals 1 to Q of the n. Q could be infinite, infinite, infinity, but um, really to get something finite dimensional, Q should be finite. Um, so all of these Vn are finite dimensional vector spaces. Um, and so then for, for P at least 0, um, I define Lp. So I'm going to define a graded Lie algebra. So I take the P plus one area operations, um, graded operations on this graded vector space. So GER stands for, it respects the, this internal grading on this vector space V. So each P I get these, these operations. So I can think, you know, this is, a, this is actually an affine scheme. Mm. It's finite dimensional if Q is finite. And um, I, I introduce a non-associative product So um, if I have um, mu in, d in uh, so operation LP, nu in LQ, um, the results should be in here. So should take um, uh, P plus Q plus one variable, so A0 through AP plus Q. Um, and that is a summation 
over some signs. Um, so I, this, is all, I, this is all the ways I can substitute um, new. Mm. So a i to a i plus q into mu from a zero to a p plus q. <coughs> By uh, keeping the order of the arguments a um, the same. And then the Gerstenhaber bracket is the anti commutator. So I have to put some sign. And, and then And I get a graded Lie algebra. There isn't even any differential um, um, yet. <coughs> the gauge group um, is going to be an algebraic group whose Lie algebra is L0. So L0 is just the graded map from L to L. So um, G is going to be um, the, uh, is the graded isomorphisms from V to V. So, which are the product of GL, BN. So, um, and this acts by conjugation. So, base change on V, and that preserves the bracket. <coughs> so, this fits into our um, framework with. Um, where the, the DGLA I start with is actually a graded Lie algebra. Um. <coughs> so what's the Maracaton locus um, of L? So that's a set of all mu and L1, such that, um, well, there's no dif differential, so it's just this condition that one half mu mu is equal to zero. So L1 with the binary operations If you work out what it means um, that, um, you know, this definition, you see that, that it just amounts to the associativity um, of mu. Mm. <coughs> so um, the Maracatau locus of L modulo um, gauge group, this is, um, you can think of it as this. So, um, <coughs> After I divide by, by base change, I'm basically I'm getting all um, all algebras um, whose underlying graded vector space is isomorphic to the given graded vector space, meaning just that it's an algebra with the, the same uh, dimensions as um, the V that I started with. So stack um, of well, these are non-unital. Um, Graded algebras <coughs> of graded dimension given by, um, so let me write this as D1, D2. So this is the dimension, D1 is the dimension of V1, so this is um, dim, dim V1, dim V2, etc. Yeah? Um, yes, I think so. Um, I can make this, um, this into unital algebra just by, um, by this, this V um, started out in degree one, I can just add a copy of the complex numbers in degree zero. And, and, and so I get a bijection between graded unital and graded non-unital algebras. So. <coughs> just put a one here beginning. 
So I've constructed some kind of derived stack of graded algebras. Um, and somehow what's going on here is that I, I started out with um, the differential graded um, B algebra, which governs the deformations of a highly degenerate object, namely where mu is zero. And then I, um, I get out of that actually a global construction. Mm. Um, okay, so um, <coughs> now, as I said, you can, you can um, look at the, the GIT problem um, for G on, um, on this L1 uh, to get this, the, you know, the bundle of curved DGLAs is going to be over um, a stack, so to get it down to a nice quasi-projective delin mumford stack. And um, since I'm running late on time, I will skip all that. Um, I guess, but, but you do get a notion of stability for graded algebras, a natural notion of stability. Um, and this uh, generalizes um, usual Hilbert stability. for um, projective polarized schemes into non-commutative algebras. And then um, uh, with in joint work with a student of mine, um, Huang, we proved that actually um, certain, um, so, So certain, so they're known as Artin Shelter regular algebras or Sklyanin algebras. Mm. So um, they have uh, um, so three generators in degree one and three relations. And this is degree one and this is degree two and there is, you can associate them to elliptic curves and automorphisms of elliptic curves. There's a very interesting class of, of non-commutative algebras and these, these turn out to be, so at least type, um, if you know what this means, type A, um, E, um, A, B, C, and E are turn out to be stable, and then there's type S, which turns out to be semi-stable. So um, anyway, you get um, quasi-projective moduli of, um, of graded algebras, and these, these are examples of these modular spaces. But um, I want to um, then in the last 15 minutes talk about the deformation theory, because um, I mean, this is all non-derived geometry. It's just classical GIT for relatively simple algebraic group acting on a vector space. So what about the deformation theory mm, um, that I get um, for this derived um, scheme? So there's some uh, derived, you know, this derived um, stack whose trun classical truncation um, is a modular space for these algebras. Mm. What are actually the higher, um, this, the obstruction spaces? So. Let me look at a Maracatan element. So suppose um, mu is a Maracatan element. So it's a binary operation, which, because it's Maracatan, is associative. So this means, um, so if this is a Maracatan element, um, then I look at um, this, I can think of it as a graded algebra, right? graded algebra. As I said, I can supply a unit in degree zero think of the graded unital algebra. Um, so, um, right, so the deformation theory I get for this graded algebra is then given by, well, by this um, graded Lie algebra L with the twisted differential, um, <coughs> d mu. So, um, so d mu is really just bracket with mu. 
And if you work out what that is, this is, this is just the Hochschild um, differential. So um, this is really just um, uh, the Hochschild complex. So this thing is the Hochschild complex of this graded algebra, but using graded co-chains. So the Hochschild differential on graded co-chains. Um, so we get... Um, so we get that the deformations um, of A are given by um, the second Hochschild, graded Hochschild cohomology of the algebra A and the obstructions um, of A um, are contained in the third um, graded Hochschild cohomology. And so we arrive at this graded Hochschild cohomology and I couldn't really find any anything in the literature on this, so um, so the question is, how do we relate this graded Hochschild cohomology to more familiar invariants? So um, let me explain um, the result that we have. So for that, I'm going to um, put myself into a slightly more general context. So let's say C is a C linear um, Grotendieck category. Yes, this is due to this, this shift, right, that, that occurred um, all the time when I, I, you know, explained earlier, when, when I turned this, this L into the, into the um, bundle of curved DGLAs, I have to, have to shift. And so that shift is, is all over the place. So then you put all the morphisms in HH1. Yes, exactly. And they wouldn't compose Well, they, yeah, I don't know, this is the way it is. So I start, I start with a um, senior Grotendieck category. Um, so that's an Abelian category AB5 with a generator. So it's a very general kind of, uh, you know, Abelian category. O is an object mm, in C. And S uh, is an auto-equivalence. of the category. And I want to assume um, the following things so that um, if I look at O twisted by minus N, and I take the family of all these for N greater than zero, so where O of N is just the nth, I apply this autoequivalence N times to my fixed object, and this generates the category, generates C. Um, So the x i in this category of O, O n, um, is equal to zero for all n greater than zero for all i greater than zero. Um, the harms from O to O are just the complex numbers. So for example, um, E.g., um, the C O S could be um, well. I have to put a whole lot of so finite dimensional non-commutative projective scheme. So Artin and Jang have developed a, a whole theory of non-commutative projective schemes, and in their theory, a non-commutative projective scheme is a triple like this. Um, such a C linear Grotendieck category, an object, and, and an autocoalence. Um, and so if, if it's, you know, then they tell you what is finite dimensional. Um, so projective scheme. Um, and then a finite cohomological dimension. And that would be an example, um, you know, if it satisfies enough of these 
properties written down by Artin and Zhang to be called such a projective scheme. Um, okay, I should say sufficiently amply polarized, right? Uh, so that I really have these, these properties. Mm. Or I could just, uh, or a simpler example is C. So the quasi-coherent um, sheaves mm. of a Y module. On a, uh, on a sufficiently amply polarized um, projective scheme. Y, and then O is of course a structure sheaf, and S is the twist by the by the polarization line bundle. Right, so O is a Y, and S is equal to. So whenever I have, th so this was the example, example, but if I have such a triple, um, I can associate to it a graded ring, A, so the sum of all n greater than or equal to zero of the homomorphisms in C from O to ON. So this is a graded C algebra. And then um, the theorem um, is um, well, it's kind of a weak version of a theorem I would wish to have, but there exists uh, there exists a long exact sequence um, of C vector spaces. So this is the thing we're interested in: the graded Hochschild cohomology of of um, this algebra um, when I throw away the degree zero bit. Um, so that's, these, these spaces fit into this long exact sequence. The other two ingredients are um, well something, the Hochschild column cohomology of, so this is what I call the reduced Hochschild cohomology of um, the, cat the abelian category C with respect to the base point, with respect to the base object O. So I put the O there to denote the base object and that bar is reduced. It's a little bit like reduced um, cohomology and topology. And here is simply the, the um, Hochschild cohomology of the category C. And here I have basically a map like this. And then it goes repeats, right? So that's a short exact sequence. So, so this thing in the middle is really almost the same as this. Um, so, um, so there's another long exact sequence. So what, how does this thing, um, the reduced Hochschild cohomology, um, and the Hochschild cohomology of the category um, and these two things differ just by this little x um, algebra of O with itself. So, um, so this this here, as as we know, um, this governs the deformation. So this governs the deformations, the deformation theory. Um, of the abelian category C. Um, so that that is a true fact, and I mean, I'm, I mean, it's, it stands to reason that this thing, um, uh, this governs the deformation theory um, of of the pair um, C O, because. Um, well, this is the deformation theory of C. This is really the deformation theory of the object O inside C. And so this should be the, um, the deformation theory of the pair. And so, um, and this thing here should really, um, I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, we think this would be, but 
that's really not proved because it's really just that we, we're just able to produce this long exact sequence of vector spaces and not really um, like a vibration of, of um, differential grade Lie algebras or anything like that. And if I, um, yeah. so this we think um, governs the deformation theory of the triple. Well, maybe I'll um, finish by so I, I um, okay, I'll finish by drawing two diagrams, um, which are kind of heuristic, maybe, but um, or maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I'll instead. Um, no, I'll just say something else. Um, well, I don't want to. Um, so, so th okay, this this was uh, what we can say if if we have this tr kind of triple um, category object auto equivalence. So this kind of non-commutative um, projective scheme. But uh, say in another case um, set where it's stated a little differently. So if y is actually a smooth. Um, uh, connected um, projective sufficiently ample um, projective projective scheme scheme of dimension <coughs> d. So that is a special case. And then um, this graded Hochschild cohomology of the homogeneous coordinate ring. Um, okay, shifted by one, so the you know so that I get the um, deformation theory. So this is <coughs> there's a, some kind of there's a type of Hochschild cost and Rosenberg theorem. Mm. which looks like this. So um, the polarization um, um, is a line bundle. So a line bundle defines a morphism from Y to BGM. And so there's a relative tangent bundle for, the, for Y over BGM. That's really just, um, you don't like writing it that way. Um, it fits into a short exact sequence. So Euler sequence. that, so it's really just an extension of the tangent bundle by O, so we need these, these exterior powers, so I get a short exact sequence, lambda j minus 1 ty goes to lambda j of this relative guy goes to lambda j ty. Um, okay, that's what this, these things are, and the get it all in the correct, correct degree, I do that. So um, the difference to the usual, um, if, if I was just looking at the usual Hochschild cohomology of, a, of the scheme Y, um, then I would start at J equals zero, and instead of um, these guys, I would only have this one here, not, not that one. So these, these um, obstruction spaces are quite a, big, quite a bit bigger. Um, it's sort of almost like sort of, sort of twice as big because, um, you know, this thing really is, um, well, yeah, I don't know how to say that. But this is what it is. Um, okay, so let me stop here.